Hey, do you need wallpaper? Go to wallpaperboulevard.com. Give them my name, tell them Spencer Colgan sent you, and they'll be sure to give you 10% off at checkout. Check it out, tell them I said hello. They have a tremendous selection. Don't shop anywhere else until you've checked out www.wallpaperboulevard.com. So why do we use an acrylic primer? An acrylic primer gives the surface on which you hang your wall covering a very hard surface to hang on. It won't allow the wall on which you hang the paper to chip and flake away as you're hanging it. This is very important for this type of wall covering. Just take a look at the material on my fingers. It's very difficult to get off. This is what you want on the wall when you're hanging this type of wall covering. You don't want the surface primer to chip away and cause bumps underneath the wallpaper. If you've ever hung an untrimmed wall covering, most of them will require some form of acrylic primer. Now let's enter the mysterious world of trimming wall covering. Why they do this, I will never understand it. You see all of the marks on the wall covering edge? That's my mark right there. I create my own. Because here's the problem. These trim marks vary in the distance from the edge. You'll find that trim mark right there, one and a quarter inches from the edge, and then the next trim mark, one and an eighth away from the edge, and then you'll find the next trim mark, one and three sixteenths of an inch away from the edge. And if you're new, at hanging untrimmed wall covering. You'll make the fatal mistake of assuming, quite reasonably, I might add, that the trim marks should necessarily be the same distance from the edge of the wall covering, since the company themselves are telling us where to trim the wall covering. Don't make this mistake. Here's what you do. Measure all of the trim marks from the edge. Write it down. This one is one and an eighth from the edge. This one is one and a quarter of an inch from the edge. This one is one and three sixteenths. And when you've measured all of the trim marks, you cut the wall, you make your own trim marks like I did here. And then you trim the wall covering according to the trim mark that you manufacture, which represents the greatest distance any of your trim marks gave you from the edge. Because if you go according to their trim mark, you're going to have a zigzag line. So you make a pencil mark after you've recorded all of the distances from the edge where their company trim mark lays. And then you say, well, this one is the greatest distance. This gives me the widest cut. I have to cut them all according to the widest cut. Because if you go shorter, you're going to wind up with a trim mark on your wallpaper. And believe it or not, it happened to me. So don't let it happen to you. You take a pencil and you mark the greatest distance, let's say it's one and a quarter of an inch. You go down the paper every 15 to 20 inches or so, you make a pencil mark right on the one and a quarter inch mark. And then you take a straight edge. You, you, if you have a wallpaper, a wallpaper hangers table, you'll see that you have a zinc plate, which is fastened to your table. That is the surface against which you make your cut. You put your wall covering on the zinc plate and then you take your straight edge 
over the wall covering, which is resting on the zinc plate, and you make the cut according to the straight edge with a very sharp blade. That's how you do it. Now let's talk about smoothing this type of wall covering out. Do you see the wrinkles in this wall covering? These hand-painted, hand-printed products offer really two sides. One of them is the backing, and then the other is a surface on which rests this painted pattern, which is what you're looking at. They get wet by the paste at different absorption rates. And this is why you get the wrinkles. This is not easy wall covering to hang because of that. The product gets very taut. And to, to feather it out, you have to use gentle hands and very little tools. Your best bet is to smooth it out with your palms of your hands. And then when you have the wall covering laid out widthwise, then you can take your smoother and push out, if, uh, level out the paste underneath it, get the air out. But you can't keep doing it. You only have a limited amount of time with friction with this stuff you'll start taking the color off of the wall covering especially at the seams the reason why you want to use a wood seam roller is that it's not as hard on the product. The luster on this product is so sensitive and perfect that if you use something harder, you see this is soft, comparatively speaking, to metal. And so this isn't going to crush the wall covering up against stipple you might have on your painted surface. So you want to use wood. Secondly, you always want to be wiping down and mending the seam. The seam is manufactured, as you know. You yourself manufacture it. Now here's a little trick. Do not try to get these little lines out. The wall covering has expanded on, t on the table. The paste is clay. Oh yeah, makes this wall covering a lot harder to work with. As you know, clay dries quickly. And it's super tacky, which means you have to use a lot of muscle to spread your wall covering out, to get the buckles out. But there comes a point when you have to know that smoothing it out is going to hurt it rather than help it. So when you get lines like that, you leave them. And when I say leave them, I don't mean indefinitely. I mean that the wallpaper itself will take care of them. Look at the luster on that wall covering. This is only wiped down once. Look at the sheen on this. You don't want to be overworking this wall covering. Look at that beauty. Look at the beauty of this product. You see that shine? That's what you're paying for when you buy this product. Now, trimming this stuff. That's my only problem. I think if the wallpaper companies trimmed it in the factory, they wouldn't be relying on experts to hang this stuff. 
You don't need a master wallpaper hanger to hang trimmed goods, but if you get the wrong guy hanging untrimmed products like this, you could wind up losing a lot of money because the trim is only going to be as good as the person making the cut on his table. How do you get those seams to match up like these do? The answer is time and understanding. Okay, let me show you what I mean. I'm six feet and a half in the air here. And I meet up perfectly in terms of this meeting here. But I come down here and I'm starting to get a little off. Right here. But I go down even further and I'm now off a noticeable sixteenth of an inch. Not good. Not good. If I go down further, the pattern rejoins, which is unusual. So my pattern has rejoined from being off. So here's how you get rid of that mismatch. Okay, just watch me do it. Okay. The least amount of handling you do to these types of wall coverings, the better. The less friction you have. Your hand is the least offensive tool on your person. So we're going to benefit from the use of the hand by fleshing out the wall covering, moving it into place. And what I like to do is to keep a hairline fracture when dealing with wall coverings that are very hard to put into position. It's always easier to join wallpaper together than it is to separate it if you've fallen into overlapping, okay? Now, as I explain this to you, understand that this ink that makes this pattern is a different material than this color here. When I wet this with paste, you can see that the pattern on the other side of it remains hard and straight while the rest of it crinkles up. So what does that mean? It means that the wall covering is expanding at a greater speed in the solid areas than these ribbed painted areas. And these are not raised textures. Mm -mm. 
So the rate of expansion differs behind the solid than these colors here. All the more reason why you have to let your wall covering expand properly on your table. Because if you don't, you're going to get channeled. They're not bubbles. They're actually, um, oh my goodness. They're, um, I forget. Uh, they're actually ribbed air pockets. They're furrows. Furrows, you know, when somebody's skin is wrinkled. They're furrows in your wall covering. And they don't come out unless you get them while the paste is wet. Let me show you some of these things I'm talking about. Can you see this right here? You see these little vertical ribs in it? See that? Okay. Anybody who's ever worked with hand painted, hand printed, this is a um, screen print. Uh, an artist was not sitting down and drawing this onto this paper. No. It came from an artist who made a design. And it is... It, the, uh, the pattern is then put onto this paper. And it has a certain effect on the wall covering as you paste it. What I'm doing is just letting the wall covering relax as I get it into place with a little more aggressive than my hand because this has some traction on it but it is a microfiber. So now, what I'm going to show you is this. Let me turn it around. Okay, let's get, let's get this into place here. Okay, I just pulled that down a hair, but look what it did. See that? Look at that, it meets perfectly here. But if I straighten that out, I'm gonna throw this off or that off. So you gotta, you gotta know where you can throw this stuff. So let's pull it down a little here. See that? See, I made a buckle there? Put one up here and we're gonna share this wrinkle this way. Okay, I'm pulling here. What you wanna do is get, you know how you make your bed? You know, you push a little this way and that way, because if you go this way, you're off, right? Now, don't run over your wallpaper and make a wrinkle. You have to know when you're going to crinkle it, because if you wrinkle it, it's permanent. And you want to push it out this way. So we shared the displacement of the wallpaper toward the seam, because that's where it worked best. Okay. Oh, my goodness. Some nasty woman one time said, I can't watch your videos. You grunt too much. I said, good riddance. And she was gone. Imagine the nerve of a person saying something like that. Now, you're probably laughing, but it's not funny. You grunt too much. My doctor told me that once. I said, what do you mean? <laughs> okay. See that? <laughs> Folks, the bottom line is this stuff is not easy to work with. I'm going to give you some hard line rules as I do this. Now, don't blame me for this. You can blame that on Bradbury and Bradbury. I painted that out. I pointed that out to the customer and he took a picture of it just in case um, it happens elsewhere. So he can say, hey, you need to send me another roll. By the way, this isn't cheap stuff. 
Okay, so you're getting the hang of how to uh, make these lines match up, right? Okay, you know, like when you manufacture your own seams, you'll find that you got to do a lot of finessing, what I call finessing. Yes, which means you really got to know what you're doing. That's what I call it, finessing. When someone says, oh, I got a price $700 cheaper. You know what I say? Oh, just like that. I go, oh. Oh. Wow. And if they push it, you know what I say? Hey, can you give me the guy's name, the gal's name? I want them working for me. You know? So... Now, folks, what I'm doing, I'm putting a lot of pressure on this. You know, this is, this is a liability for the wallpaper hanger, okay? Because you can easily rip this. Note the angle at which I'm smoothing this. Now, this is against the directions. They say not to do this. But they're covering themselves, too. You have to know what you're doing and when to stop. If you're making the wall covering hot by doing this, yes, you will burnish it. You will. I don't have the rag underneath it because we're at the uh, extreme smoothing process, which means I need friction. I need to lay this out for the final time, you know? So let's see how we're matching up. By the way, is everybody having a nice new year? friend in the UK, Phil Beckwith. He's a paper installer. No, I'm a decorator. We don't call ourselves paper hangers. I'm a decorator. Okay. He's a decorator. In, uh, he told me the city, but you know. I don't remember it. Okay, we're off here. We're off. So I'm gonna put the I'm gonna put the camera down so I can do this right. Okay. So we're matching at the knee level, but not at the head level. It's pretty cool when you can't find your own seam though. I almost couldn't find it. So I'm just gonna. Do up here what I did down there. Alright. Okay. Uh, I'm stretching the product. Stretching it. By the way, did you know that these screen screen prints have a one eighth inch play? So let's say your cut isn't 100% perfect. Within the pattern itself, when you match it up, if you're off an eighth of an inch, you're fine. Let's face it, the manufacturer didn't do a perfect job when they put their trim on. Trim marks, right? Key to this product is keep wiping it down. Because it's very susceptible to staining.
I'm holding my smoothie at a 10 degree angle against the wall, which will prevent chopping, which is when the angle is too close to a right angle. You stagger against the wallpaper and you make permanent marks in it because the angle was wrong. People don't want to hang this stuff, you know. It's matching up perfectly. Now, rather than smooth it over here, I'm going to pull the wall covering off of the wall because I have a lot of paste under there. Let's wipe it down. microfiber.
every now and again, you'll have a wall covering tear down near the trim board at the bottom or somewhere at the top or in a corner. And you can't go replacing a sheet of wall covering that can cost upwards of $1,000 for one sheet. There are Schumachers out there that are hand-painted that cost $1,000 a sheet because they're $2,000 a roll, and you get two sheets out of them. And so what I'm doing here is eliminating a very ugly piece underneath. This wall covering was almost perfect. It came with some discoloration, which the homeowner took photographs of in order to document if the error repeated itself throughout the sheets. And so all I'm doing is removing something that was very ugly underneath it. It could be a tear, or it could be a discoloration of the pattern. In either case, you may want to simply splice it rather than waste an entire two feet of the wall covering. And when you do a splice, and this is properly called a splice, you want to also remember to remove the backing from the piece you're replacing. So this is a theater room. The, ro the wall on your left will be getting a big screen theater. And these are the only three walls I had to paper. This was a challenging product, as all hand-painted products are, particularly because of the time it takes. One, to trim it. Each sheet, when you measure, as we described earlier in the video, and trim both sides, is minimally a 10 minute ordeal. Pasting the, the product, because we're using a clay-based product, I'm not using my pasting machine. Uh, very few machines on the market today can take full clay paste. And so I manually pasted that on my table that you see right there. And this is the overall effect. Look at how beautiful it is. It is a very smart looking pattern indeed. Wiping it down with a microfiber cloth is key. You don't want any of the paste drying on the front of it. Oddly enough, the directions for this Bradbury and Bradbury said, we recommend our clay based paste. Okay, and how long is that gonna take to get in the USA? And so we used our own clay-based paste for the product. But um, they're very particular about making sure that you're aware of the clay paste needs to be cleaned off of the facade sooner than later. My closing me remarks about this product would be to become familiar with how untrimmed wall covering is trimmed. Trimming it on both sides of the, of the paper 
is makes it's essential for a successful product, a successful finish. You can't be afraid of doing it. It's intimidating at first because your line, if you go according to the trim marks, may not be straight. But if you make your own, like I showed you here, you'll be doing a great job.